we were talking about this yesterday, but the ultimate aim in martial arts, I mean, obviously, I say I train in martial arts to be able to defend myself or protect myself, or I train in martial arts to be able to, you know, learn this particular tradition and all that kind of stuff. And all that's well and good, but when you guys train, a good teacher should be able to love their student and push them beyond a limit of what they think they can go. Now, that's the nicest way of saying that. That's the nicest way of saying that. But, I mean, if we take that statement, push your student beyond the limit that they think they can go, what does that mean? If you tell me, I can't go no more, and then I tell you, go. There's a moment where that pisses them off. You're, you're, what that means is you're constantly making your students do something. Not only do they not think they can do, they probably don't want to do. Right? So this idea of, of being a good martial art teacher is you have to create friction. You can't sharpen a sword without friction. Right? So just like the way we make a sword. You get a piece of, you get this lump of steel. You get a mass lump. Walks into the dojo. We well, have to heat them up, right? And beat the hell out of them to shape it. That's how you make a sword. That's when you shape the sword. Same thing with you guys. You heat them up, beat them up. Beat them into shape, right? But the only way to put an edge on that weapon is friction. And that friction is irritation. You know what I mean? How many times you hear the old saying, oh, they're just causing too much friction. I can't take it no more. It's because you're getting irritated. You have to irritate your student. And everyone's like, well, why would you want to do that? Because you have to teach them patience. You have to teach them how to be humble. And people don't understand that the way, you, the way to be humble is through that. People think you have humility because of, uh, you know, you read a book or you get this old story of some sage or something. It's like, oh, good, you know, have a cup of tea and I'm humble. No, you're just quiet. There's a difference between being quiet and being humble. If we go up to, up to like this, this Kansas City, I said this the other day, we walk around the block, there's 100 people on that block, I guarantee it, every block you walk on, 100 plus people who think they could kick your ass and have no problem wanting to kick your ass. Just the same, you walk around the block, you have 100 people plus that want to run their mouth, right? And fuck you and go to hell and piss off and you're a fucking pussy or whatever the fuck they say, right? They just right. run in their mouth. The idea here is when it becomes that intense situation, you're not fighting because you're using emotion or anger. You're fighting because you have to protect yourself with the ones you love. So there's a different mindset. You don't run your mouth. You learn how no matter how many things someone tells you that pisses you off, you learn to be quiet and stay humble. Because if you could do that with me and have a connection with me when I'm pissing you off, and I do, I think every one of you guys has probably been a time I'm pissed off. Look at that one laugh. I know, I pissed him off. <laughs> of course. You know, just... But if you could do it with me, then you should be able to do it with someone that you don't love. Right? But some of us have this idea that, well, maybe now nah, I'll just tell that person to fuck off because I don't know him. No, that's when you sh definitely don't do it. Because you don't know them. You don't know what they're carrying. No, we don't know everybody's story. Everyone has a story you don't know about. Even if you think you know them, there's a story about them you don't know. That's just the reality of it. So you have to learn to be humble. You have to learn no matter how much you get irritated, you keep your mouth shut. And that's part of training. I'm telling all of you, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to piss you off. I'm going to say things that you don't agree with. Half the time, hell, I don't even agree with half the things I say. I'm just saying it to piss you off. Because I know it's irritating you and it's getting in your head. Then I'll send you out there and do some sparring while you're pissed off. And hopefully you can learn how to control your emotion while you're pissed. Because when you fight, you're probably going to have that idea of i got to control my shit while I fight. Mm -hmm. I know there are great martial art teachers who don't spar in their dojos. And they don't piss their students off. They just kiss all their asses. And they tell them all these great wise words. Okay. I'm not that teacher. I don't live in a world where... People don't get mad at other people. I don't live in a world where hate, racism, prejudice, and pain don't exist. I don't live in a world where I don't wake up every morning, drink my coffee, and watch someone getting beaten the shit out of or shot in the news. I don't live in one of those worlds where I could sit there and drink my tea and watch the flower blossom and contemplate. I live in a world where pain, terrorism, hate, hatred, 
prejudice, racism, sexism exists. And I'm trying to find balance and happiness through martial arts training in that world. And the only way I've ever found to do it is to be humble and calm even when the shit hits the fan. Keep your head about you even when the shit hits the fan. To pretend that that shit out there doesn't exist, I think those teachers who don't prepare their students to deal with the raw reality of life and the hatred and violence that is associated with the world that we live in now, those martial art teachers that don't prepare their students for that, I think they should apologize to their students.